Hey everyone, Theron Asbury here with Revital Outdoors again, bringing you another exciting podcast tonight. We're going to the great state of North Carolina. We're going to talk to Mr. Joel Richardson. Last year, Joel got a top 10 finish in the BFL North Carolina Division Tournament on High Rock Lake. That tournament was at a different time of year last year, but that same tournament on High Rock Lake is coming up in the next couple of weeks here in the end of April. So we're very excited to talk to Joel. He's got a great reputation and a great history on High Rock Lake. So he's going to give us a little bit of, of his insights, what he predicts for the tournament this year, and a lot of great content coming your way. Before we get started, Revital Outdoors is having a very exciting uh, giveaway package for a lucky angler at the end of the year. We're going to do a $2,500 giveaway for a lucky angler at the end of the year. We will choose that person uh, a- after the tournament season has uh commenced so in order to enter i'm going to put up a banner real quick you will see a link at the top of the description right below this video hit that link it takes two seconds to enter and i promise you you're going to want to get on this giveaway again that person will be entered uh, or will be selected at the end of the year make sure you're uh, subscribed to this uh, youtube page that way you get notified when all of our content is dropping we want to say thank you real quick to all of the anglers that we've gotten to interview this year uh, fishing all the BFL tournaments, both uh, post and pre tournament. You know, everything's just been really, really great this year. So, thank you so much to all the anglers that have agreed to come on this podcast. Um, also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's going to be Revital Outdoors. And if you've never heard of Revital Outdoors, we're a premium CBD company. We offer premium CBD products to all the outdoor enthusiasts out there. Our products are THC free, made right here in America. So, check them out on our website. You can order right off our website, www.revitaloutdoors.com. So, But that being said, let's go ahead and bring Joel Richardson into the studio. Unfortunately, we can't see him. We don't have any uh, visual on, but we do have a very strong audio. So we'll talk to him right now. Joel, how are you doing this evening, bud? Doing just fine. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on to the podcast. Um, You know, let's talk about High Rock Lake uh, a little bit. You know, never been there, never heard a whole lot about it. I know uh, there's been a lot of history on that lake. The BFL North Carolina Division goes there every year. So tell us what's special about High Rock. Well, it's an old lake. It's probably, it may be one of our, it is our oldest, I think it's our oldest lake in the state. And it's 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 more of a river run lake. It's not very deep. Lots of current. Tons of incoming water from the Yadkin River and all the big tributaries that feed it. So to the fishermen, I think that's great because it's, typically off-colored water and lots of current and you really don't have to fish very deep water there and it's full of boat docks full of stumps full of rocks and you know like in the Carolinas we have a lot of red clay so you know the fish tend to gravitate to that most of the year actually think areas where red clay are at and lots of shad I guess it's probably got as many shad as per acre as any lake I've ever ever seen Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Well, in terms of your tournament last year, again, top 10 finish and and congratulations to you in the North Carolina division on that same lake, different time of year, but how were you able to kind of put together the pieces to, uh, to catch your fish? Well, at that, uh, at that tournament, it was uh, in June and that's a early summer pattern for us. So most all of the fish are starting to move a little deeper and, and deep being 10 feet there. Um, the fish were coming offshore and we have big flats and creek channels and things like that and lots of fishing pressure. So one thing about that lake, if you leave a good spot, you may not get it back. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not really many secrets there anymore as far as the structure, offshore structure goes. But uh, I knew the fish were coming out and they were really on the feed pretty hard, you know, after the spawn. And uh, basically my it took me two tournaments to figure out that I needed to get on a good spot and just stay there. And that's what I've done. And I uh, actually had the bites to probably have won that tournament. And I watched the guy win the tournament actually that day uh, within a hundred yards of me. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. So I'm thinking you're throwing reaction baits. So the way you're talking, you're throwing reaction face. You're covering some water. Uh, I was, I was, uh, basically, what I was doing was fishing a, a flat that had a, a drop off on it and some rocks and stumps along the edge of it. And I was using reaction baits like crankbaits. I was, I was throwing some crankbaits that run in the seven to 10 foot range. And I'd alternate and throw some plastics 
in behind them when they seem to slow down. And, you know, the fish there, they're really funny. And I've done this so many times over the years, um, fishing really good spots. They can be there and you never get a bite. And you come back a couple hours later and you can win the tournament in 10 minutes, even after other guys have already fished it. So don't let that fool you about this lake. I mean, you can pull up to a place and just hit it at a little different angle and catch all the fish. And five boats have, have fished it three or four hours before you even get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really specific um, timing. I mean, in the, in the summertime, but now, you know, this tournament that, that is coming up is, is uh, I believe it's right around the end of April. Is that not right? It, yeah, so April 23rd. Yeah, they're 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 gonna the fish are gonna be uh, well before that type of pattern, and uh, we're gonna be probably a heavy shad spawn and bass spawning at the same time. And you know, I, I would predict that the tournament's gonna be won in probably less than three feet of water. And there's multiple patterns with our, this lake. We've had so much rain and wind in this part of the country and maybe your part too, but for over a month and a half. And I mean, tremendous wind. And it's been some really warm weather and some cool weather, but I think that we're gonna land, this tournament's gonna land in, in right in the middle of a hard spawn and definitely a shad spawn. And I would think that, you know, three to five foot of water at the most docks, I, I would, if I had to predict, docks will win the tournament. It just that's that's a dock lake anymore. There's so many docks out there. I got you. I got you. What do you think weight wise um, is going to take away for like winning the tournament and to cash a check? If well, it's going to very. It's going to. We got a lot of warm weather now. We got a full moon coming. If they get to spawning, of right before this shad spawn. I think that by the time the tournament gets there, I think it's going to happen at the same time. And that's really not good for a shad spawn. What, what the best scenario is, is we get a few, you know, get a decent amount of fish spawned out and then a shad spawn happen. And then these larger fish are going to get on that shad spawn and, and that, that'll win the tournament. And it could take 23 to 24 pounds to win. And, and I wouldn't surprise me to see 25, but, if we have most of the fish still on the bed and the shad spawning at the same time, and, and I see that, that, ha that, that happens some years. It's like they, they start at the same time. You can catch a lot of fish on the shad spawn, but you're not going to win no tournament. Right. And your, guy, your guys that are fishing shallow cover, you're not necessarily sight fishing on High Rock Lake. There's lots of dingy water and there's been lots of dingy water this year, more than normal. It's not really a sight fishing lake, but it's those guys that are fishing where them fish are spawning and, and using the right baits and the right, the right working their baits properly to catch spawning fish. That'll, that'll be your winner. That'll be your winner. I, I wouldn't think it'll be a, much of a post spawn bite. And if it is, it's going to be on the shad spawn. Okay. Okay. When you say fishing docks, are you talking, if you don't mind me asking, are you talking like skipping a jig, throwing a swim bait, maybe throw a finesse style lure, you know, targeting the fish in the bottom in a brush pile or um, when you're talking about uh, dock fishing, what are you kind of yeah. speaking in terms of? Yeah. And every, every method you mentioned is, is, is a good way. But during the time of the year that this tournament's going to be, I would say they're less likely to be way back under them docks. They're going to be kind of around them just spawning in, in it, you know, where the sun can, can get to the fish. Um, I've caught a lot of fish there when they're spawning and and they'll just kind of be beside the dock, not not right. necessarily way back under there. Now, later on after, you know, when there's a, a lot of the fish are post spawn, your guys that are getting way back under there is going to be your heavy hitters. Okay, okay. Joel, I want to ask you a question about dog fishing. This is a shout out to all the co-anglers out there. Um, you know, a lot of co-anglers, when they hear that their boater is going to go dog fishing, they immediately get discouraged. They get pissed. They don't even want to go fishing yeah. no more. Um, I learned a long time ago, use everything you can to your advantage. Always keep a lure in the water. You can't catch fish with a lure out of the water and a bad attitude. So 
When yeah. you, let's say you draw, let's say you were calling in this event, you draw a guy that's going to mm-hmm. go dog fishing. How are you using those to, how are you using those uh, obstacles to your advantage and what kind of baits are you throwing? Well, if I had to guess, if I got paired up with a dock fisherman, he's going to be skipping under there all day and he's leaving every fish wide open. Most, not every fish, but a lot of fish wide open. I, I would probably be fishing, like I said, around the outside edges of them docks and trying to keep my bait in less than five feet of water. And say that's not the case and this guy's fishing and he knows they're spawning and they're, he's not really trying to get way back under that dock. I, I would, I would uh, try to fish a little slower, try to envision that maybe you're fishing for a fish that's not going to move very far to get a bait and, and use smaller baits and, and kind of keep them around an area where you think one would be and not necessarily move it so much. Leave it around there a little bit. You know, you know how it is when bass are spawning and you can see them. If you pull it too far and it gets away from his bed, he's not going to bite it. No. So, you know, you're you're dealing with this is what's going to happen is you're going to be dealing with this kind of fish and you can't see them. And and knowing that is the big is the big trick. Right. And and I'll, I'll bet you that will be a big factor in that tournament, something like that. And and shaky head worms work great there, but I'm not a big fan of them. I like them out in deep water, and I like a big heavy one. But but uh, your smaller baits, uh, keeping them on the bottom, keeping them slow, in the sunlight, you're gonna catch you're gonna catch some of them fish. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll give a little tip to the co anglers out there. One of my favorite baits to dock fish with is I actually don't fish the dock. I just drag behind the motor all day long. I stay completely out of the way of the boater, let him do his thing. But on the terms of the shaky head, and I really can't believe I'm saying this, take a quarter ounce wobble head, also known as the biffle head. Um, I pour my own using Do It Molds products. I take a quarter ounce uh, wobble head with a three-aught hook, and I put a mag trick worm, uh, either green pumpkin or watermelon candy with a little bit of the uh, tip dyed in some chartreuse, and I will drag that sucker all day long around those docks and the pilings and there's brush piles underneath. And I'm not necessarily, ca- you know, casting at the dock again. I'm, I'm fishing around the docks and I will drag all day long. And I promise you, your five bites will be presented to you. So um, you got to yeah. be patient. You know, all the co-anglers out there that draw a dock fishermen, don't let that discourage you. Show up with a healthy attitude. Offer to bring some ice. Bring 75 bucks for gas. You know, fist bump your boater. Bring three or four rods. Don't bring a ton of tackle and use it to your advantage. A positive attitude and a great, healthy, you know, teamwork effort in that boat throughout the day will go a long ways for both you and the boater, I promise you. Yeah, I agree with you. So, well, cool. Well, Joe, before we let you go, a lot of great information about High Rock Lake. Good luck to you this year in the tournament. But before we let you go, I know you got a lot of great people that support you around the North Carolina area. Great family. Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? Yes, I sure would. Uh, well, my family, first of all, and, and God is, is my main support, but I, I have uh, a lot of good support and some friends with a, a, a local company here in Kernersville, North Carolina, AAR Roofing Company. They really they really work with us, and and uh, without them, I, w- I wouldn't be fishing a lot of the big tournaments that I am fishing, but they help us out, they support us right behind us. I Gosh, I can't say enough about them. Great company and and another company, uh, which is here on the North Carolina-Virginia border. It's Commercial Steel Erection Company, CSE. Uh, great company. They love to fish. These guys with AR Roofing and, and CSE, they're, they're very competitive bass fishermen, and I can't say enough about them. I mean, they, really, they really stand behind us. Absolutely. So, well, Joel, really appreciate you coming on to our podcast. Thank you to all the listeners out there. Again, you've been talking or listening to Mr. Uh, Joel Richardson. He finished in the top 10 last year in the North Carolina Division BFL uh, for the High Rock Lake Tournament. Uh, He's been giving his predictions for this year. So really appreciate Joel taking time out of his busy schedules to join us. Uh, Make sure before we let you go, you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then as always, make sure you see the... uh, You see the scrolling banner below. Make sure you hit that link at the top of the description right below this video. Enter that $2,500 giveaway. That lucky angler will be chosen at the end of the season. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, thank you to Joel Richardson for joining us this evening. Thank you to all of our listeners out there. 
Be safe out there. God bless. And we'll talk to everyone on the very next podcast.